Hi, Trevor. Can you hear me? Now I can, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Super, super. So we, we, we have a <clears throat> we have a pretty big day today. We're we're originally gonna have 14 people come on today. <laughs> It, um, it's still going to be a marathon. We're still going to have 12 people. Uh, two people change the times to uh, later days for the Bitcoin Olympics. Um, and welcome, welcome everybody that is listening to us um, on, on Twitter spaces. You may be on LinkedIn streaming, on YouTube streaming. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm thrilled to announce that Trevor Owens, uh, managing partner of the Bitcoin Frontier Fund, is co hosting the, the Bitcoin Olympics with us, the Bitcoin startup lab. Let's get into it, let's get into it. Trevor, so you helped set up a lot of these speakers um, for the Bitcoin Olympics and also today. Um, what's, what's exciting you about, about today? Let's, 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 let's give a quick refresher for the crowd on, you know, let's, let's start with the, let's start with the sponsors because a lot of sponsors, the CEOs or the, or the co-founders, they're gonna come up and, and talk and share. Um, what can be built, what they wish they could build if they had more time before next Bitcoin having. So before we get started and before I get your, your ideas on this, Trevor, um, let me, let me shout out to uh, uh, our, we have, we have 10 sponsors. Um, actually we have, we have more than 10 sponsors, but, but from a, like a company level, we have 10. Uh, the first one's Hero. Big shout out. Thank you, Hero, doing uh, Bitcoin ordinals and uh, Stacks Wallet API, Hero huge contributor rootstock another huge contributor um rootstock is also uh, one of the pioneers in the bitcoin DeFi space and uh, i'm really excited we're gonna have co-founder and ceo diego coming to speak today um stacks foundation yeah that's 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 a pretty big one um it, it'd be it, that's gonna be really interesting uh, because Muneeb's also gonna be talking today too right to see the um to, to see different insights on different fronts of the bitcoin frontier right and um, Sax Foundation has been a huge supporter. Shout out to Sax Foundation uh, mechanism. Thank you, Hank and Jeff. Also, um, you know, um, startup, but you know, sp startup with a uh, with a lot of power, a lot of punch. Right? The big contributor, uh, one BTC news. Patrick is going to talk today as well. Or actually, Patrick's talking tomorrow, but he's also a huge contributor. Bifari, on the edge of advertisement and Bitcoin innovations. Um, uh, Jordy, the CEO and co founder is going to be speaking today. Uh, Xverse, another uh, leader in ordinal uh, APIs and, and wallets, uh, speaking tomorrow. Uh, Force Prime, the the intersection between gaming and Bitcoin uh, and Unity. That's going to be really fun. Uh, Arcadico, uh, Bitcoin Stacks, Lending, DeFi, and then Gamma, of course, are um, our marketplace. Uh, one of the leaders in, in ordinals as well. So um, these these are our sponsors. Now I have great news. Um, you know I, I was. Um, Talking about, um, uh, you know, there's actually um, about 20 something speakers now, right? And, and, and mind you, these speakers are, are investors, they're steer entrepreneurs, they're, they're the co founders, CEOs, and um, other, um, you know, CTOs of these, of these uh, very innovative uh, companies uh, on the frontier of the Bitcoin innovation. And they have generously put up their time to give you guys one-on-one. -on -one. So if you guys uh, turn on a project, it's awesome, right? We have over 50, 30 minute slots <laughs> with these people. So that's that in itself, I think is um, probably like um, just as good as a cash prize um, in some ways, like they're, they're different, right? They're different, but you know, very, very valuable, very, very valuable time. And again, this is um, not, you know, just, just to, you know, I, I've mentioned this yesterday, but I, I like mentioning this just to underscore how valuable this time is. Um, you know, Trevor, Trevor, I met Trevor Owens almost what? How, when do we meet? Like almost 10 years ago now. But right? back then he was charging uh, 5K to $10,000 per hour. So he has generously put up his time. More, so more you, than that. Come on, man. It was more than that. Okay. Well, I'm I, short, I'm I'm me short on this and everyone here. Well, yeah. Well, if we adjust it by inflation, then we could double it, right, or triple it. <laughs> so, oh, <man>. oh, <laughs> all right. So, so that's just to give you an idea of half hour of his time, or any any one of the speakers' time is is um you know it, it's quite priceless. It's not you know you know we can't really put a dollar tag on it. It's more about how it could transform your thinking or push your project forward. Right. With that said, with that said, let's get into it, Trevor. You you helped us. Uh, line up a lot of these speakers, right? 
uh, for Bitcoin DeFi Day. What, what are your thoughts? What are you most excited about today? I mean, we have, you know, it's, it's, it's going to run from what, 8 a.m. now Pacific time all the way until 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon, right? So it's a marathon of, of speakers. What, what are your thoughts? I think, this is, I think this is super exciting. I mean, I've never seen an online hackathon uh, done like this before with Twitter spaces and live streaming and Discord. So hats off to your team on all the effort. I know this has like never been done before. So, you know, it's it's not easy to pull off. And I think that there's going to be, um, it's I think it's going to be awesome. I think the, the fact that this is globally accessible to anybody uh, in the world to participate and to meet cool people and to build something, um, you know, on Bitcoin that could be maybe uh, become a business or become an app that a lot of people use is fantastic. And um, I'm excited for a lot of the speakers today. I think Bitcoin DeFi will definitely be the juggernaut of this entire industry. I think that Bitcoin DeFi will for sure pass the size of Ethereum DeFi, no doubt about it. Um, whether ordinals and non-fungible assets on Bitcoin pass Ethereum um, TBD, you know, I think it'll be a very, um, very competitive, or I think it'll probably most likely be you know, second place for a long time uh, to Ethereum. Um, but Bitcoin DeFi, no doubt there's, you know, uh, 400 plus billion of Bitcoin that could be used productively. Uh, and only 10 billion of it is being used on wrapped, um, sorry, 542 billion as of today, uh, Bitcoin that can be used for, um, for DeFi uh, and is not being used. And so, if we look at uh, Rap Bitcoin, you know it's only about four billion that's being used on Ethereum uh, through Rap Bitcoin because I, of having a um, custodian. Yeah, I mean four billion is tiny. That's what is that one percent ish of like the less than one percent of Bitcoin's market cap is being used in, in in DeFi right now. And and like it's not like people don't want to use it in DeFi. It's just that people want to have custody of their. Uh, if you if you have a billion dollars. You're not gonna you're not gonna trust all of that in um, you know a single uh, custodian, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and I think I think it's the perfect storm has has, has been, become has been created. Meaning that last year we had all these um, centralized um, uh, financial institutions uh, managing people's um, cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin being one of them. <laughs> they collapsed. They collapsed, which really um, underscores the importance of a decentralized non-custodial system, right? And, um, but back then we actually had the technology to do it, but we didn't have the, a lot of the APIs, a lot of tooling, which we do have now, but then there was still something missing. There was like that Bitcoin was still seen sort of like there's a dinosaur in the room until a couple of months ago, Ordinals has shown us the way that, hey, actually Bitcoin is sexy to build on again. And then people are like, well, if, if NFTs are worth more, on the Bitcoin asset, on the Bitcoin chain, right? Then wouldn't DeFi also be more valuable? <laughs> if it becomes like a very easy uh, logic, like what do you what do you think about that? What's what's your take on that? Like, how, how does it make you feel? Like, it... yeah, I think um, that's such a good question. Uh, how do I how do I feel about that? I feel like to me it's like obvious, right? It's like okay, um, more liquidity. Also, just as an as an asset, like proof proof of work is just more solid than proof of stake. I mean, there's trade offs, right? Like you get something different with proof of stake that you don't get with proof of work, but with proof of work, you get a more solid currency. You get a more solid asset. Um, you know, you get a, um, a situation where the, the miners, the people who control consensus, they have to run a good business uh, or someone else can displace their uh, place in the market, right? Like miners have to constantly spend Bitcoin. It's a tough business to be in. Uh, it's very profitable if you do it right. Uh, you have to innovate. And if you don't, someone else is going to come in and do it better than you. With proof of stake, that's not the case. Proof of stake, uh, the winners are declared, and then like there, no one's going to take their place until they sell their assets. So, um, and proof of stake, of course, very environmentally friendly. Uh, it's supposedly more scalable. Um, I don't think we've seen that with Ethereum yet. Um, but um, and th and there's other advantages to it. I mean, in general, like it's good to have lots of different consensus models out there being tried and tested in the market. But I think that we've seen that proof of work is, uh, and because of Bitcoin's origin story, the the fairness of its launch, that's just most likely to be uh, a, a global digital currency, right? Like even in the beginning of Ethereum, you know, it's been, people always said it's a gas token. It's not, a, it's a token. Then later on, people said, oh, it's ultrasound money. And then 
you know, we have Udi on Bankless saying, no, Binance is a uh, hypersound money, you know, just to, to kind of troll, to kind of troll that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm super excited for Bitcoin DeFi. The reality is that there's a much larger white space of ideas in Bitcoin DeFi than there are in ordinals, at least for now, um, because the use cases of uh, beyond uh, JPEGs and digital art, like when we're talking about music, we're talking about um, film, entertainment, other types of digital assets have not been, uh, have not struck yet, you know, even on Ethereum, you know, TBD, when we'll see music as a uh, means for uh, NFTs really hit, uh, hit it off, hit it out of the park. Um, but right now it's mainly, you know, digital art, one-on-ones, PFPs, but with DeFi, I mean, the, the, the space is, is much bigger in terms of the number of opportunities, right? So, um, you know, with, uh, with ordinals, I think that the, the design space is going to be a lot of it in infrastructure, wallets, um, marketplaces, um, helping creators, creator tools. But then with DeFi, there's like, you know, 30 to 50 different like types of derivatives, types of infrastructure that's needed. So there's a lot more opportunity for more startups to be created in Bitcoin DeFi than, in my opinion, on, on ordinals, at least for now, um, because the, um, you know, like, uh, DeFi can also be used like like for like for every use case that goes forward. Like you can you know you can you can buy you can uh, sorry you can borrow you can lend your ordinals. You know like DeFi kind of scales with like all the other digital asset use cases. And so um, oh yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean just just to carry on that, it, it's like you know we could we just walk through our our, our daily lives, right? Um, banking can be re-envisioned with DeFi, right? With Bitcoin. Um, Sometimes you have to take out a mortgage for your house or finance your car, or um, you may want to trade the stock market. That's a decentralized exchange, right? Um, like you said, there's stock options, depending on what your insurance, um, depending on what your needs are. Um, if you're doing import, export, or if you're um, in any kind of business, escrow services, right? Trading services, like the, like, like, uh, DeFi uh, permeates every single aspect of a lifestyle. If there wasn't a financial backbone, our economy wouldn't run. So now is our opportunity to re-envision that, 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 that financial backbone, but in a decentralized manner, in a non custodial manner with Bitcoin at the center. And that's what's amazing about this. And, and I think the numbers, you, the numbers you mentioned speak for themselves. Bitcoin is already valued at over 400 billion valuation. Um, and 542. Five, okay, so five hundred. Thank you, thank you. Over over half a over half a trillion valuation, right? And only roughly one percent, a little over one per, around one percent is being utilized, and it's already that valuation. But Ethereum is it dominates like ninety percent of the DeFi market, ninety plus percent. And even then, right? And it dominates the the NFT market too. And even then, it's only worth what what, what is it worth right now? Two uh, two hundred or Close to three or 25. Yeah. I mean, something, something like 60% of Ethereum's market cap is from DeFi, right? Is, is DeFi TVL. And then yeah. maybe 40% is uh, NFTs or, you know, even maybe like a little bit closer to 50 50, um, depending on the day. Yeah. So just imagine the Bitcoin dominance, like the, you know, what, what how will Bitcoin value go up as the usage goes up with uh, decentralized finance? Um, let's, let's, um, uh, because we we have some questions about uh, people are asking about the prizes. Let me go over the prizes, and maybe we could tie into um, and then so people because today the the really awesome thing about today is all these speakers, uh, you, you know, if we if we imagine our our Bitcoin, um, innovation or or ecosystem as a circle as a growing circle as more and more people um believe in a sustainable Bitcoin economy, um, the way we structure today's talk. Um, and Trevor and I, we went through a, a lot of uh, efforts to make sure that there's people representing different parts and different edges of the Bitcoin frontier, right? Because if you're on one side of the frontier, um, you could talk about that side, right? But you won't know completely about what the other side is doing, right? So today is going to be a 360 degree view. It's going to be really interesting, not just for for audience, but also really interesting, I think, for speakers as well. I mean, this is um, stuff that you cannot Google, and and all of them are gonna share something that is very, very valuable and unique. And that's when we are on the front line of any kind of innovation, we know what can be done and we know what cannot be done, right? And what cannot be done is actually a startup idea because you fix that the frontier, the frontier line goes forward, you, right? The frontier line goes forward. 
So today they're going to share with you if they had more time, what they wish they could be building before the next Bitcoin having, which um, according to our calculations is roughly one year from now, almost exactly one year from now, right? It's going to be April 6th or 7th is the next Bitcoin having. So right now is a perfect time to get in, get the inside track on all these awesome startup ideas and start building now. Like, um, like prepare, get your surfboard ready, um, get your community ready, get your team ready, um, get your knowledge ready so you can surf the tsunami, right? The Ordinals has created one tsunami and there's going to be like a, a, like a, a whole, just like the ocean, right? Like it's, gonna, it's just going to be an a, a onslaught of opportunities between now and the next Bitcoin having, get on it now. Um, so let me, let me because a, a lot of you, Right. A lot of you have signed up to the Bitcoin Olympics. Um, if you haven't done so already, sign up. up you know, do it today. We, you know, we, we got, I think, 30 signups yesterday. So it's going to increase. It's going to increase. So definitely jump on now and uh, get started early. Uh, why? Because there's going to be, as I mentioned, there's going to be over uh, 10 cash prizes and over 50 one-on-one sessions with the speakers, investors, CEOs, co-founders, CTOs. <laughs> that is amazing that is amazing i wish i had that opportunity when i first started uh, don't you trevor and um so here here are the general rules for the prizes right um the base requirement your project must have the five pillars of innovation uh and it must have bitcoin involved with it right so the five pillars of innovation we're defined as uh it has to be clear meaning that when you present your final presentation like a two-minute video it should be it should show the value of what you're creating and logic uh, is clear communicated. The second pillar of innovation, it's got to be useful. It's got to be solving a real user problem. Number three, it's got to be novel, meaning it has to be original and you can't bring something from before. You have to get inspired by all the awesome information and then and then build something original, right? Um, it could be almost the exact same thing on Ethereum, but re with Bitcoin. That is original. That's different. It doesn't exist on Bitcoin, right? And you can also stand on the shoulders of giants. You can learn from the mistakes and make yours even better, right? It's gotta be direct disruptive, meaning that, um, yes, it, this is a hackathon. Um, on April 11th, you have about six days to turn on your final assignment, final task, but, you know, and that's just a proof of concept, right? The code has to be working, but um, it has to, you know, we have to be able to see the potential that potentially it could disrupt or become better than the best existing solution. That's the fourth pillar of innovation. And number five, Number five, last but not least, I think this is my favorite one. You have to have a team to innovate, all right? Collaborate in a team of two to five people. Show you have complementary skills and they should show in your project, right? The presentation should be awesome. The code should be sound, right? Uh, right? The business use case, the user use case has to, has to make sense, right? And, 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 that, and that is just a basic requirement, right? That is a basic requirement for, for, for innovation. And we're going to show you how uh, we're going to have a lot of awesome content and there's going to be bonus points before I get to bonus points, Trevor, you have your hand raised, go for it. Yeah, Albert, I'm getting some messages that uh, your audio is coming in and out a little bit. So I don't know if there's um, some we can, we can fix there for a quick second. I can also kind of hear it a little bit on my, on my zoom. It's like getting louder and then. Uh oh, let's see. Um, Testing, testing, one, two, three, how's now? Um, did you change any setting or? Um, it, it just showed that it was unstable for a second. I hope it passes. Um, but okay, I wanna save that thought because we have Philip coming on right now. Um, Trevor, do you have any final words of encouragement or what you're looking forward to for today before we wrap this up and bring the next speaker on? Yeah, I would just say get uh, get after it, you know, like, Honestly, just such a good opportunity right now to get access to if you're if you're trying to build something, such a good opportunity to get access to anybody. Like you won't get you won't probably will not get an opportunity like this again. Like two year two years from now, like these type of events are gonna be, you know, uh a thousand people. You know what I'm saying? So um right now you're early and and it's good to be early. So I would say everyone is gonna be um approachable and you have a real opportunity next uh the next week and a half here to to learn to grow and to meet some people that could really change uh the trajectory of your career in the future yep thanks so much trevor thank you thank you for coming on
we are going to um, switch over. And, and Trevor, we're going to, guys, don't worry. Trevor is going to come back um, tomorrow, right? He, he's, um, he's part of this, and you'll, you'll see Trevor every day. And Trevor is going to also be sharing on Saturday and Sunday um, some inside information on how to form teams, um, how to turn a hackathon project into investment um, startup. Uh, and also talk about how to build something that people want, uh, which is um, rapid idea validation, All right? So um, thank you, Trevor, for coming on, and uh, see you soon. See you